Hi, I'm Jan Brett, and I'm very excited about the holiday season coming up because it's the perfect time to read a story to little ones, and even just to reminisce about one's own childhood. I have illustrated The Nutcracker, and I'm very excited about um, finally seeing it in children's hands after a year of drawing and sketching. And I think of all the books I've ever done, this one has taken the longest because it's just filled with um, all the things that you might want to see in the ballet and have read about if you've read The Nutcracker and The Mouse King, which is where it all started. In the early 1800s, and I have my copy, the author is E.T.A. Hoffman. And he was a writer and music lover, and he wrote The Nutcracker and the Mouse King. It's a, almost a nov novella. It's really long, and it has lots of different sections and parts to it. When Tchaikovsky was looking for a theme for a ballet to write, that he was going to write, he came across the story, and he shortened it and took the parts that he thought would be the he envisioned illustrating with music. And this was, the book was written in the early 1800s, and then Tchaikovsky wrote the music in the late 19, 1800s. So it was quite a big gap there while he was um, composing, and he wrote three ballets, and The Nutcracker is, and he, Tchaikovsky, first of all, is probably one of the greatest composers of Western music that has ever lived. And I loved his music. Probably the reason I'm illustrating this is because I have sat in Ch Symphony Hall. My husband, Joe, is a bass player in the Boston Symphony. And I have listened to the Nutcracker Suite so many times in, with the orchestra and also with the Boston Pops, because at Christmas time it's one of the pieces that really evokes that magical Christmassy feel. The ballet is something I tr have treasured going with my, our family to the Boston Ballet, and I've also on YouTube seen so many different versions. Both those experiences and musically, and the experiences looking at the ballet have really helped with illustrating my book because I wanted to put everything in that I just loved and made my imagination um, just go crazy <laughs> while I was listening. So here is my book, and I'm going to read you the story. It starts out here with uh, two little children that are being kind of shut out of their dining room. They call it a drawing room in the book, in the big living room, actually. They're ha the parents are having a big Christmas party, and it's kind of a surprise. It's Christmas Eve, and they're waiting outside the door, listening to all the commotion inside as the grown-ups are getting it ready. So it starts. Sounds like Christmas. Smells like Christmas. It is Christmas, Marie laughed. <laughs> Thumps and bumps and jingling bells. I'm ready, whooped her brother Fritz. Two characters. And then in the border, you can see the grown-ups <clears throat> inside the drawing room is trimming the tree. The doors opened into a magical Christmas party, but Marie could have never guessed how magical. Not far away, Uncle Drosselmeyer was gathering the curious creations he had fashioned for Christmas Eve. So in this page, you see the beautiful Christmas tree and all the invited guests parading around. This is the children, of course. The boys have um, little toy horses and are dressed as soldiers. And they're all having a grand time eating yummy treats and being greeting their friends and relatives. And then in the border, you can see Drosselmeyer has this kind of old-fashioned cart. This would have been in the 1800s, so there would no, not be any cars. So he would be dry. a horse-drawn sleigh is passing on one side, and he's trundling this cart with the curious creations. And then on this page, if you notice, there's a clock behind the tree with an owl on top, a very carved wooden clock. It's going to play a big, important part later in the book. Uncle Drosselmeyer wheeled in the mysterious boxes. Inside were a trickster and two harlequins. 
with a turn of his key and a and a hum, 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 they danced. The figures were so lifelike, everybody wanted to join the fun and dance along. But Marie was enthralled by the nutcracker her uncle had placed under the tree. He looks like a real boy, she mused, who has traveled from a place far away. So I had um, an antique nutcracker that I used for the book. But then this is another one that I have in my collection of nutcrackers. And this one is a, a cami, which is a kind of um, antelope-like goat that lives in the Alps. And you put the nut in here and it cracks open. And that was a big part of our Christmas festivities. We always had a big bowl of nuts with their shells and we could crack them open. And I always liked the hazelnuts the best. The partygoers danced the grand march in the quadrille and applauded the beautiful music. Uncle Drosselmeyer arrived at Marie's side. He placed a hazelnut in Nutcracker's mouth. Quack! Out came a perfect nut. Marie beamed. What a surprising fellow he is, she thought. So if you listen to the Nutcracker Suite, you could do it with um, a musical, de a device that plays music or your YouTube. You would be hearing the... Um, crack of the nutcracker um, in the music. It was late when Marie's mother pleaded with her to say goodnight to the guests, but Marie would not leave her nutcracker. Fritz, wanting to see how he worked, had broken the nutcracker, and Marie was helping him get better. So the big brother was playing around and probably a little bit jealous of her getting so much attention with a nutcracker, and he wanted to play with it too and got a little bit rough with it. When the house was silent, Marie lay awake in her bed. It's Christmas Eve, remember. I better check on the nutcracker, she thought. And she tiptoed past Uncle's old carved clock with a watchful owl on top. In the eerie light, this part's a little bit scary, Marie felt awed. As the old clock chimed 12, gong, gong, she seemed to be getting smaller, and or everything else around her was getting bigger. Strange sounds were coming from inside the walls. Squeaky, squeak, squeaks, scratchy, scratchy, squeak. Then Marie saw a mouse as bold as brass, and he wore a glittering crown. Strange things are our foot. And on this page, you can see the owl has flown off the clock, and he's kind of has emits a weird light to it, which is kind of my way of showing that magical things are afoot. Slowly, the old gilded cabinet, which we've seen in the background, holding Uncle's wonderful gifts from times past, creaked open. The figures inside moved as if waking up, and Marie heard the sounds of mice gathering at her back. That's a squeaky. <laughs> Fritz's toy soldiers were mustering forces. Then a strong, clear voice called, we will not stand for any mouse invasion or their wicked king. It was the Nutcracker, now a boy, on his feet and on the move. The magic has been completed. The Nutcracker is now a little boy. It was a ferocious battle. The Nutcracker jumped into the thick of it. Crack! The soldiers marched and the mice pounced. Then the Mouse King leaped upon the Nutcracker. Brave Marie reached down for her slipper, took exacting aim, and toppled the wicked Mouse King in one blow. The Nutcracker was saved. So I love drawing this page because Marie's got her shoe off, it's a slipper, and she's going to give that mouse a, his um, what for. The battle was won, and the wicked Mouse King was vanquished. The soldiers formed a hero's march for Marie and the Nutcracker. At the end of the march, Marie whispered, What is this? For inside the cabinet, the door of the gingerbread house was open. A sleigh was waiting for them, and the Nutcracker and Marie stepped in. A wintry figure beckoned them forward as she danced among the snowflakes. 
So in the distance, they're seeing that beautiful fairy queen dancing among the snowflakes. And you'll hear that in the music. The sleigh glided through a dreamland of icicles until they heard lively music, molto vivace, playing. Dancing bears performed the Russian trepak. This is a fantastic Russian dance. If you could ever see it, you would be amazed at the athleticism of it. All thoughts of the battle and the Mouse King disappeared as the music reached their ears, then their hearts, and down to their very toes. It was hard, it's hard to describe how beautiful that music is, but it does carry you away. They leaped higher and higher until one, with a twinkle in his eye, lifted Marie skyward before gently placing her into the sleigh. And you'll see that in the ballet, all the wonderful lifts that the dancers do. The men will bring the women up and the ballerinas and twirl them up in the air as if they're flying. Next, they were gliding through a birch copse. That's another word for forest. The wintry lady escorted them to a sparkling clearing where two elegant foxes performed, performed where two elegant foxes performed the dance arib, their foxtails entwining. Marie, standing on her toes, imagined the handsome fox spinning her as part of the dance. When the foxes bowed towards the lady and the nutcracker applauded, Marie exclaimed, she must be the princess of this snowy land. So this is the dance I read, which I loved illustrating because it's very, it's very um, uh, sensual and warm and it just feels like something wonderful is happening as the dancers move about the stage. As the sleigh followed the snow princess, the treetops suddenly exploded. A large creature careened through them, sprinkling the woodland with dazzling snow crystals. The dragon's breath was humrumping out a song, humpa, 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 humpa. With great fanfare, two flying squirrels leaped off its back and invited Marie and Nutcracker for a cup of tea from their samovar. So what is a samovar? It's a tea maker. I brought one. This I bought in Russia. We went to Russia and got lots of ideas to St. Petersburg. This is a tourist one. And I really bought it because I wanted to sh see the beautiful, to keep these beautiful decorations for my book. But this is like a pretend one. It has a little spigot in the front. Let me turn it. And in real life, this is like what you would use if you're out on a picnic or didn't have electricity. There's an outer part, then you put hot coals in it from the fire, and then inside is, is where the water is, and then you put the tea in, and so, so the smoke comes out from the burning embers, heats up the water, and then you can pour your tea into a little teapot and have a hot, beautiful hot tea, glass of hot tea, which is very special because there's special teas that are made for this wonder. It's not really a ceremony, but it's a wonderful addition to a picnic. And they even put a pine cone in the ember so that the, fr the smoke will be fragrant. And if you look carefully, there's the um, samovar in the picture. And I got the idea from a, a Russian stamp. I don't have it right with me now. I got the idea from a Russian stamp. This is an antique samovar, but I put a little face on mine, if you look very carefully. And there's, you can see the pine cone, and you can see it almost looks like bagels, but it's a kind of bread that is toasted over the flames. And so they're having um, a wonderful little tea in the middle of the snowy woods. And I, I love the dragon. When I listened to the music, all I could picture was this dragon going, humpa, humpa, and it's a bassoon solo. And if you look at the bottom of each page, you can see animal musicians playing the different instruments that will have a solo that will match this page in the Nutcracker Suite, which is Tchaikovsky's version of the ballet that he did for the orchestral stage. So there's really two pieces of music. There's a Nutcracker ballet, which is very long, over an hour, and that's what you would hear if you go to the ballet. Then, then he took the greatest hits from that ballet for the orchestra to play, and that's where I was in Boston Symphony Hall getting ideas for my book. It was from the, or from the Nutcracker Suite. So you recognize the, the same music in both, but the 
the Nutcracker Ballet has a little bit of a longer version and also some wonderful parts that are eliminated in the suite, which I didn't get to illustrate. As the sky grew the color of a sugar plum and the snow became many shades of blue, hundreds of tiny flames appeared and lanterns illuminated the path. Antlered friends playing flutes led them towards the gingerbread house. The nutcracker smiled to Marie, his eyes happy and sad at the same time, like the music. Are we headed back home already, asked Marie. Not quite yet whispered the snow princess. And then on the border you can see that there's a gingerbread house and you can just see the, the doors and there are little windows and when you turn the page you can see the view through the windows and you see Marie and the Nutcracker are looking through and you see the light is coming out and there's little hedgehogs there dancing around there waltzing. They're dancing hedgehogs and those little yellow flowers are ones that we have in our yard that bloom in the snow. And so that's what I use for the hedgehogs to decorate themselves with. They peeked through the gingerbread windows at bouquets of spring flowers, swooping and twirling to a waltz. But then they also saw bustling prickles. I thought hedgehogs slept through the winter, Marie laughed. You have to just find their gingerbread palace to see them, answered the nutcracker. The snow princess smiled. We have even a bigger treat in store for you. And then this page is like the grand finale. It shows inside the gingerbread house. And this is the hall of sweets that if you go to the ballet, it's, um, you'll see all the different characters, the um, pochichinelles, you can see the uh, candy canes, the Dance of the Flowers is the part of this scene as well. And Fritz and the, um, no, not Fritz, the nut, and the Nutcracker and Marie are sitting at a table covered with um, a beautiful cloth and sweets for them to, as they view all the dancing. The gingerbread doors opened. The animal orchestra performed the Waltz of the Flowers. Candy cane elves and fairies danced to the Nutcracker to celebrate his bravery in standing up for the wicked, to the wicked mouse king. The gingerbread doors opened. The animal orchestra performed the Waltz of the Flowers. Candy cane elves and fairies danced for the Nutcracker to celebrate his bravery in standing up to the wicked mouse king. Mother Ginger and her chicks thanked Marie for throwing that slipper that changed the course of the battle. And you can see Mother Ginger is a, has a huge giant skirt. And when she opens it up, the little, little clown children come out. They're called Puchicha and Elves. And they are um, a traditional little dancers. And they dance around, but the, tr the secret is in the ballet, it's always played by a man because the skirt is so heavy, you need someone very, very strong to hold it up. So the man is dressed as a woman. So in my story, I have a rooster dressed up in woman's clothes as Mother Ginger, as kind of a joke and a reminder to look very carefully at Mother Ginger when you go to the ballet because you'll see that she's looks like a very strong lady. I guess she is really not. And then all the little chicks are coming out from under her skirt, just like I have chickens and the mother hen is always, when she has her baby chicks, they all are underneath her in her fluff, peeking out between her her wings and then they run out and run around and then go back in just like the little little child dancers and many of the roles in the ballet are played by children especially those little ones that come out from under mother ginger so it's just something you do not want to miss the, the nutcracker ballet the celestis twinkling notes and the whirling dancing made marie's imagination take flight for what seemed hours as her eyelids and the nutcrackers drew, grew heavy, the doors to the old cabinet creaked open once more and beckoned them back to Marie's home. So they're starting to get sleepy, and all of a sudden, it's time to go. And this is like a dreamlike sequence, and all of a sudden, Marie wakes up. The next day, 
Marie was happy to wake up to her mother's loving face and Fritz's mischievous smile. Her nutcracker was by her side, and almost everything was as before. But from that day forward, even when she was grown, when she heard the notes of the Celesta, she felt she and the Nutcracker were back in the land of the Snow Princess once more. So I think whenever you hear the notes of the Celesta, it sounds almost like if icicles could become musical instruments, that's what it would sound like. And Tchaikovsky was one of the first people to ever put the Celesta in a, in a com composition of music. It was just invented during that time. So it's very special. And it's like a, p a little bit like a piano. So listen for the Celesta when you hear either the Nutcracker Suite or you go to the Nutcracker Ballet. And I hope that you can imagine it, all the dancing when you listen to the music. <laughs> 